Hi everyone, welcome to my Autodesk screencast. My name is Zan Ta and I work for Repro Products in Smyrna, Georgia. I am an Autodesk certified instructor and hold many certifications in multiple Autodesk products for the AEC industry. I hope you enjoy my screencast. If you'd like to see more of my screencasts, please search for VAR 2015, that's V-A-R 2015, or my name. Please don't forget to give me a thumbs up after you watch it. <clears throat> in today's screencast, we'll be taking a look at a couple of structural commands, the beam system command and the brace command. Here I am in a Revit structure model. I'm on level two. If I look at the model in 3D, this is what we have. I'd like to put in a beam system for any one of these bays or all of these bays. In the structure tab of the ribbon, structure panel, we have the beam system command. Start the command. <clears throat> And in the contextual tab called Modify Place Structural Beam System, you can either place the beam system automatically or sketch the beam boundary system. In the type selector, you only have one to work with. If you click and hit Edit Type, it just tells you it's a system family and it has some basic editing data that you can input. If you look at the instance property data, though, you can see things like the layout rule for patterning. It could be a fixed distance, say two feet. It could be a fixed number, say six of them. It could be a maximum spacing, say, I don't know, two feet, uh, so on and so forth. So you can pick the layout rule that you want. Let's put in fixed number of six is fine. <clears throat> the beam type here is what's used to describe what kind of individual beams are being placed in a repetitive manner for this beam system. This list only shows what you currently have in your project. So if you need to include another one that isn't in this list, you need to load that family before you do this command. I'll do it twice, once without loading, once with loading. <clears throat> I have automatic beam system still placed. In the options toolbar, I can also select the beams type that I want to work with, uh, the layout rule, and the number. And I can also do this in 3D if I have to. If I do work with it in 3D, make sure this is checked for snapping to 3D. <clears throat> I'll leave automatic beam system, and if I place my mouse on the horizontal uh, beam that's already here, you can see a very light cyan dashed lines to represent how it's going to appear when you're finished. If you put your mouse over the vertical one, this is going to be the end result. So I'll click once here. If I go over to this one, I click this one, and put it in, and we're good. If I want to do it by sketch, I can click sketch beam system. And it will ask me to draw the boundary lines that represent the outside edges of the beam system. Now, you don't actually have to have all of this to make a beam system. You can just draw this from scratch over here. <clears throat> and it doesn't have to be rectangular. As long as your opening, or as long as your sketch is one clean closed loop, no gaps, no overlaps, no stray lines anywhere, this will act as your uh, beam system. The double line represents your beam direction. So if you need to change that, you can click beam direction and either pick another line, draw a line, or pick a structure. So for example, here it says pick line. I can pick this one, and now that becomes the direction of the beams. When you're all said and done, hit the green check mark, <clears throat> and it builds it for you. Okay. It also tags it, by the way, when you're doing um, by sketch. Now, let's take a look at this in 3D. <clears throat> we know that it's a beam system, so when you put your mouse over the outside edges, excuse me, it'll highlight, and if I left click once, I can edit that boundary again and make changes that I want to make. Um, so let's say, for example, I do this instead, I hit the green check mark, and now I have a different beam system. <clears throat> one of the other things that you could do as well is you can actually select any individual one. You may or may not have to tab in, depending how much information is displayed. If you select it, they're pinned by default. But if you unpin it, then you can swap it for a different type. And you can also change things like the elevation on the ends or the slope as well, okay? or the length as well. And depending on what kind of uh, beam system that you're working with and the types of beams that you're placing, you can have additional uh, features within the instance property of that object. So that is the beam system command. <clears throat> Let's head over to <clears throat> an elevation, say this one. And 
I'm going to put in cross bracing. So over here and under the same uh, tab structure, same panel structure, there is the bracing command. Start the command. It will ask you to pick a plane to work off of. If you haven't created a reference plane and given it a name, you will not see it in this drop down list. You can pick a plane, however, and let's say, for example, I pick uh, <clears throat> the plane of that column. In the type selector, I can pick the type of uh, family that I want to work with <clears throat> to use for the cross bracing. <coughs> Excuse me. And when you place it, make sure that you're clicking and snapping to the node of the object because if you aren't, the connection won't be a clean connection, not just graphically, but also structurally and also from the analytical structural model standpoint. So make sure you're snapping like that. Okay? I don't think I hit that lower left hand corner properly because it looks different than the upper right hand corner. So we'll do it again. As you can see, you may have issues. So let's take a look at it in 3D. And I selected that face of that column. That's why the cross bracing is on the face. So let's do this again. <clears throat> let's go back to the elevation. Or better yet, let's go to the plan view. And I'm going to create a reference plane this time, right where I want, which is here. I can select that reference plane and give it a name, hoping RP. Now if we head over to the elevation and do the command, we can set the uh, plane. Let's go back to set and we'll set it to this one. Hit OK. And now when we do the bracing command, we'll pick the one that we want to work with. We'll go over here. We'll snap to this intersection. Go down to this corner, snap to this one, and as you can see, it's coming in OK. We'll snap to this one, and this one down here. Hmm. Sometimes, <clears throat> if you continue to run into this issue where it doesn't seem to want to snap properly, you may want to do it in 3D. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's do the command, but make sure 3D snapping is turned on. And again, prior to using the command, make sure that you've set the reference plane to the correct level that you want. So now we'll do bracing, 3D snapping. We'll snap to this node, and we'll snap to this node over here. And then we'll come up here, we'll snap to this node, and come down and snap to this node. And now our cross bracing is placed correctly. So it may take a couple of trials, uh, trial and errors, um, to get it exactly the way you want, but it'll do it. And that's the beam system command and the bracing command in Revit. Thank you very much for watching my screencast, and please don't forget to give me a thumbs up.